this is the first one, hello, and welcome back. Um, most of the introductory stuff of coming back is in the other one, so I'm not going to do too much of it here, because it's going to be more focused on something else, but hello, welcome back, it's good to see you, I hope you've been doing well, I hope you are doing well, I really do. So, um, I'm going to be tapping on some stuff today as well while I'm talking. I haven't done this in a long time, so apologies if I, I forget to continue at some point or something like that. I, uh, I will really try hard. I should be. The first thing I'm going to be tapping on is some leather. Um, leather makes some really interesting sounds. Today, um, we're we'll talking about a letter the course of almost the last year or so since about last June, so it's been a little bit less than a year. Um, I started having doubts and questioning this my uh, my gender and that's very weird right because it's not something that most people question really um at least that's what I've read but I told my mother for the first time that I didn't always feel male, um, in last June, June of 2018, so, I wasn't sure where that was going to make me, or what that even really meant, because I had a lot of other issues, and I, and, you know, going mentally, so, I was just like, I don't know if I just feel really depressed, and whatnot. And I'm misinterpreting feelings. But, unfortunately, um, I guess fortunately, but those thoughts and feelings didn't go away. And, um, and Jesus is the first, I just got right to it. And I figured out that I was trans in December, early, early December. I came out on Christmas, uh, Christmas Day, to my mother. And I came out on social media a couple of days before. I came out to friends before that. So, yeah. Um, and it's been, it's been weird, um. The family is taking it weird. My friends are wonderful human beings, and they've been so lovely. And you can see some of it behind me, but they've donated a lot of clothes that they were getting rid of to me, so that way I could have clothes that I could actually um, dress the way the way I felt inside. And it's been it's been wonderful. It's helped so much with anxiety and whatnot. And this is something that's common, uh, in, because most trans people feel dysphoria, um, because they, you know, the gender and what your biological sex is, is different. And that causes a lot of distress within, um, your brain and your chem chemically. So, it's... 
it comes out in a lot of different ways for very different people, and it's expressed and triggered in different ways. So it's hard to like determine beforehand that you have dysphoria from someone telling you. You kind of have to just know that that's what it is. And I never thought I had dysphoria um, until after <laughs> I realized. And then once I started dressing the way I identify, it helped in ways that I didn't think it would. And it didn't, like, I mean, nothing went away completely. But I can feel that it helps. And I, I started hormones, and that's also helped quite a bit. Um, and I've only been on it for a week, and people say that it, it, the longer you own it, the more it helps, and that you would know pretty quickly if you were not, you know, if you thought you were trans, but you weren't, once you're on hormones, and your brain, um, yeah, well, your brain would reject the, the hormones that you're putting into it, because it doesn't say that that's what it wants. But in a trans person, that is, it says it does want that. So, it makes everything better. And, uh, again, I've only been on it for a week. I think yesterday was exactly a week. But, a week from yesterday, which was Friday. A week from Friday, I only took half a dose. So, technically, <laughs> today's the first, today's the week of, um of being able to, of, 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 like, taking a full dose for a full day. So, that's kind of the first week. Um, but it's been very nice dealing with the dysphoria. It's been that nice. Just being, it's, it's all, I don't, I don't want to be trans. And I hope to someday I get to the point where I'm okay with it, but for right now, I really don't want, I don't want, um, to be trans, and because it only creates problems, and it just makes things more difficult, but I hope to one day inspire people, inspire fellow trans people, um, because there's a lot of trans role models out there that are living a good life and they're they seem happy and I hope I hope to one day be one of those. But I know right now that I'm not. And um I'm gonna I wanna somehow document the journey from fairly the beginning. It's only been about a year, I mean it's got the rest of my life to take this journey. Um, so yeah. Um, hopefully, I'll, I'll either be talking about it in videos like this. I have a blog that I've thought about using again, and I may, but right now I'm doing a lot of video stuff and audio stuff. So. I, I don't know about the blog right yet, because I can kind of do this, which is like a video blog, and that's, that's pretty, and that's pretty good, that's pretty much the same, so, yeah, um, what else, where was I going, um, I'm not out to all of my family yet, I don't know if I said that, I'm only out to my mom, and my brother, and my stepdad, and I don't know if they told my baby sisters yet. My sisters are five and, and, and three. Um, they're gonna be six and four soon, they're getting so old. I started this channel before they were even, they were even alive. <laughs> so, it's crazy to think how much life has changed. I don't know. I don't know. I hope one day that things are better. I really, I'm hopeful 
that they can be. But I'm gonna switch over to tapping on. I don't know. But it's my eyeglass. This case produces a lot harder taps. So um, I, I'm gonna come to my whole family at some point. But I don't know when, because I know I'm going to lose contact with at least some of them. And I don't know if I'm ready for that yet. Because we just had um, a tragedy in the family. And it's... Uh, I, I don't want to... I don't want to have to lose touch with some of the people who were affected by those that tragedy. Um, it makes me sad to think about. So, I don't want to test that yet. Eventually, the changes from hormones and whatnot will be unavoidable. Um, and I'm going to have to come out. But that's not for a long time. So we'll see what happens. Luckily, I moved out and I can express myself how I want. Um, without worry of getting kicked out or something so we'll see we'll see how life progresses you never know you never really know I didn't think this is where uh, my journey would take me um, I knew that I wasn't at the end of the journey yet, my journey yet. Um, and I mean I'm I'm done that part of that journey. This is a different journey now. Does that make sense? You know, I believe that you're always on a journey, and you know you gotta figure out what what one. And my journey started with. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, psychedelic <laughs> drugs. I think that was that part of that journey of just. It wasn't. It wasn't a journey of like using it. It was a journey of self exploration and. You know, I knew, and I had learned so much about myself, so much, so many important therapeutic things, so many awful nights of just hating myself because of learning things that I didn't really realize about myself before, about why I hated it, but once you have a solid grasp on what you hate when you didn't before, you can start to change that and fix that and fix problems. Now, um... I don't know, I learned a lot about myself, but I knew that my journey wasn't over yet. But I didn't know why, because I wasn't really sure. There, I had tripped a lot, and I wasn't learning anything from them. And I had gotten the, there's kind of a saying, uh, if you get the, if, if you get the message, hang up the phone. So I thought my journey was over, and I was like, I'm not really sure, because it feels like it's not over. But these drugs, I feel like it's. I feel like it's time to stop. Uh, you know, I feel. I thought. I think. I think the drugs are telling me to hang up the phone. I think I got the message, and I just gotta interpret it. Maybe that's the issue. So I'm not interpreting it right. I'm not interpreting it all the way. I'm being dumb. I gotta think about it more. No, I don't think that that's the case because I don't think my journey was over because starting about when that happened was when I started really solidly having those thoughts of of um questioning my gender. So I don't know. I do I do think that that, that, that was a thing that helped um me realize it. So and there's a lot of like once I realized it there was so much in my past about signs that I sort of known. Like from one of the earliest ones was I was a little as a little kid I I was I had a little girlfriend and not like I like dating but like she was just a girl that was my friend and I went over to her house for a play date and she had this Barbie uh, dollhouse and I was really excited to play with it and um, I didn't really know why I was just like it looks fun to play with I don't know you know I was about six or something and you don't really have two solid thoughts um, but but it wasn't working and I was really bummed about that. And she was too, so it wasn't like I was the only one. But, um, I don't know if it was my mother or her mother, but somehow the idea was conveyed to me that I should not have been 
so disappointed to play with the girl's toy. And that's one of the of the solid foundational memories that I have. Um from why I repressed for a while and luckily luckily I did what I did because I didn't think I would have would have really known for a long time without the use of psychedelic drugs. Namely acid and, and shrooms. Um, as well as a little bit of salvia and DMT. And I'll make videos about this in the future because it's very interesting topics and I think there's a lot to discuss there. So, another one was, I, I don't remember a specific time, but my, I, I crossed my legs like a girl with, you know, the knees right over top of each other and whatnot. And my mom told me that, you know, my mom was just like, that's not, that's not how a boy sits. A boy sits like this. And then she had me put, like, my leg up with my ankle where my, where my other knee was. If that makes sense. Um, if you know what I'm talking about, I think you should understand. I don't know, though. So, from those two memories, those are really what laid the foundation that I shouldn't be feminine and whatnot. And there were stuff later, like, one time I was mistaken for a man when I had longer hair uh, than this. And I was like, hey. But I was just like, I don't know why. And because I hated being called sir. And I thought it was just because of the formality of it. But I hate, because I was a manager. So I hated being called sir. I would always tell him that sir is my father's name. Don't call me sir. Um, but I like ma'am, so it didn't really make much sense. Um, I have so many, and it's, I, um, let's get a little personal, but, you know, I would try it on women clothing, uh, like my mom's and whatnot, and my girlfriend's when she lived with me, or my ex now, but, so... And I kind of thought that was all normal. I thought it was normal. I didn't think it was that odd. I thought it was just like a secret that everyone did. Because I knew it was like, I was ashamed of it. It was embarrassing. And I didn't want to get caught. But, I apologize if you can hear that in the background, by the way. I hope it isn't too bad. But, um, yeah. I, but I thought it was fairly normal. I didn't think everyone did it. But, like, I thought a fair amount of people did it. I didn't think it was that abnormal or that it was a sign of anything else and um you know obviously it was uh there's just and there's so many more that I'm mean, gonna have a whole list on my phone of just cause when everything cause there's two kind of ways that trans people find out either is a slow process of acceptance or it comes crashing down like a tidal wave of just all these realizations all like boom 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 oh my gosh so and that's the way it was for me and so I had to write down everything that I was because I had to somehow whenever I'm going inward I need to go outward that's something I learned while tripping but that's true of my everyday life when I'm starting to get a little flustered I just need to express my feelings either in writing or in speaking so that's what I did and I was a lot <laughs> um, let me see mm -hmm. sorry I'm trying to find um, I didn't ever like wearing shorts and I was really uncomfortable with how hairy my legs were but I was just like I don't know why because it's normal it's normal for a guy um, I always wanted to be pretty. Uh, I would look at women's fashion with a lot of envy and jealousy. I don't, I don't know. It was just like, women's fashion is so much better. I want to look like that. I want to look pretty like those girls. But I, I didn't realize that then I was a girl. I thought, I was just kind of feminine. I don't know. Um... I would masquerade as females online, let's have female identities, and that was great. I always gravitate towards that. Um, I never really liked masculine stuff. Uh, I mean, that's not like specific trans, but I always felt like 
I was more comfortable with girls, having girlfriends and whatnot. Like whenever I was with a group of girls and it was just me, um, and no guys, it was really, really nice. I didn't know why. It was great. It was just like, it was like, uh, it's all like intuitive too. It's not like, you know, all these feelings are easy to express in words afterwards, but they're really hard to understand and express to yourself when they're happening. You just know that you're feeling some type of way. You don't really know why, what, you know. Um, I always felt trapped, and I never felt normal, felt kind of alien, and I never really knew why. I thought it was just because I was a weirdo, but, you know, I mean, I am. I don't know. This video is getting a little bit long, so I want to get going, um, but I hope you enjoyed, and I hope this was informative if you had ever been curious to hear this kind of this kind of side of things from a trans girl. Um, you're trans person well you know it's just cause not I'm I'm told that cis people which is cis c-i-s is the term for not transgender people um just, you know people that they're biological and they're they're chemical chemical gender it gets a little confusing kind of trying to refer to both of those but yeah it's just like you know, everything matches up cis um and so cis people don't really question their gender like there's the famous trans test of if you had a button that you could push to be the opposite gender forever permanently would you push it and uh pretty much every trans person says yes wholeheartedly and now a cis person may say yes say you know yeah i would push that button but um, or, you know, you'll hear your cis friends talking about how they would be, they would love to be a woman for the day, or whatever, they would love to be, I don't know if girls say it, but, for about, like, oh, I'd love to be a guy for a day, whether they're not trans, but, I don't know, I know guys do it, and, but it always follows with, like, if I would, I would just, you know, play with myself all day, or just go, you know, be the biggest slut in town, and for trans people, it would just be like, I would just be happier living my life as the opposite gender. I would want to go be a, you know, big, you know, go sleep with everyone or whatever. Um, so, yeah, that's the difference between that. And so there's that button test and, you know. There's also the site, uh, You Are a Girl, if you're questioning. I have a link in the description below, but it has a lot of resources, and a lot of questions, a lot of information on if you're questioning your gender, or you want to be a girl, or whatever, it, it'll help you along with that, so, but I appreciate it if you got to the end, and you're still watching, or listening, and I hope you have a good one, and, um, yeah, have a good day, I will see you in the next video.